Hi students, welcome to Structure Engineering Lectures and welcome to the new playlist in the design of the steel structures. Wherein today's class we shall see the designs of the roof trusses. Wherein what are the types and components of the roof trusses? We will also try to calculate the dead load, live load, and wind load for a given roof truss geometry. Right? We will see the numeric problems. Right? In the previous class we have seen the design of built-up or compound beams, which are uh, which were subject uh, uh, which were subjected to low shear forces. Actually, they were the laterally supported beams. We have seen one problem there. I hope you enjoyed the discussions there. Then don't forget to click like, share, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Want to see the brief profile speaker? That is I, Dr. David Peshmar, obtained my B.Tech in civil engineering from Nagarjun University in 1994. M.Tech structural engineering from J.N. to Hyderabad in 2000. P.H.D. structural engineering from J.N. to Hyderabad in 2009. Presently, I am working as professor of Department of Civil Engineering, University College of Engineering, Osmani University, Hyderabad, Telangana State. I have an experience of 27 years, of which 7 years is in industry and 20 years is in teaching and research at graduate and postgraduate levels. My research areas include reinforced cement concrete designs, steel structural designs, structural analysis, point element analysis, earthquake engineering, ridge engineering, structural optimization. I have published 45 research papers in international as well as national journals, conferences. I have been to three international conferences and 11 national conferences and workshops, and it attended 43 workshops, visited two countries, delivered 13 guest lectures, edited three books, supervising 14 PhD scholars, and supervised 30 MBA theses. I am actively involved in various consultancy works that are offered by the department, completed over 750 plus design proof checks. And 150 plus designs of the RCC steel composite to low rise, high rise, multi-storey buildings and road as well as rail bridges. Right. And now let us see. Uh, in this class, what shall uh, what we'll be discussing today? Uh, we'll be discussing the design of roof trusses. The roof trusses. When first we'll see what are the different components of the roof trusses. How before I see the components of the roof trusses. Now let me re, uh, uh, let me go to this uh, code book. SP 38, SNT 1987, page number two, terminology, right? What are the different terminologies that are used, right? Uh, I'm showing here a 3D schematic of a uh, roof truss, wherein what are the components? Uh, what are the terminology there? These are defined. Let me go to that here. I'm saying that uh, this is the uh, bay. Bay is defined as the space between the successive bends is called a bay. The next. Bracing the single or double diagonal members which form truss with columns are beams trusses. Beams are trusses to provide stability to resist the horizontal loads are called bracing. Say, right? and next the columns. These are the members generally vert generally vertical which primarily resist the axial loads only. Right, and they are more often subjected to thrust and movements also. Right, and. The column height means it is the height of the column from the top of the pedestal or bottom of the column base plate to the bottom of the truss shoe angle in the structure without cranes and up to the bottom of the gantry guard in the case of the columns with cranes is defined as the column height right and uh, crane girders are these resist the vert uh, vertical as well as horizontal loads from cranes. They usually consist of I beams and a channel section and flanged down, welded to the top of flange. The other day in beam chapter we have seen that. Please revisit that uh, the shapes, right? And girders, the beam members which are carrying the side sheetings and supported by the columns, right? Uh, these definitions also we have seen during the beams chapter, right? Purlins are the uh, nothing but these are the beam members carrying the roof sheeting and supported by the trusses. And roof slope. It is the slope of the roof material with respect to the span length, right? It is obtained by the dividing height of the truss by half the span of the truss for a type truss, and height of the truss divided by the span for lean to roof truss, right? And spacing between the trusses is the center line distance of two trusses in longitudinal direction, and the span is defined as the center line distance of the Roof columns in transverse direction, right? Once I examine these, right? As for this SP 38 SNT 1987, let me revisit to this uh, 3D schematic. Therefore, I am now just showing a um, the next heading as the components of the roof trusses. Therefore, I am showing a 3D schematic wherein I do have a uh, uh, pitched 
sloped roof truss pitched or sloped roof truss wherein this is a uh, this this is called a bay width bay width between the trusses to truss right and this is called the end bay and as well as this is the intermediate bay that i'll show also right and each of the bay are connected by means of the bracings the bracing set right? however we'll see those uh, these are called the side bracings as well as even in the top part also we would have the top part bracing as well as in the bottom cords also we would have the bottom cord bracing therefore in a truss if i take one truss therefore this is what called the bottom cord member whereas the uh, generally the bottom cord member is a principal tie right principal tie right where this is called the top cord member uh, top cord member this is primarily a continuous compression member com continuous compression member right and this is called a stanchion stanchion or post right and we would have uh, uh, the purlins right these are called the purlins student right when over which over which the roof sheeting is supported roof sheeting is supported these are called the rafters rafters over which the purlins are supported over which the roof sheeting is provided and this is the roof ridge right this apex point is what called the roof ridge and now even even uh, let me see right this is called the eaves point the eaves point right and sometimes we may also be providing the knee bay knee brace right knee brace that i'll show in schematic uh, in photograph also right however if i take this uh, 2d view 2d view right the 2d view looks like this when this is the uh, sloped or pitched roof wherein this is called the uh, major sling whereas this this component is what called the minor sling and these members are referred to as the struts and this is called a tie right whereas this is the top cord member and this is the bottom cord member bottom cord member is a principal tie and the top cord member is a principal compression member right and these are rafters rafters and these are what the purlins over which the sheeting will be provided the sheeting will be provided like this right generally the uh, purlins will be provided at uh, the uh, panel points or joint points so that this compression member is not designed for bending movement right if it is not provided at this panel points obviously even we need to design the top compression member uh, right uh, uh, top part member for bending also bending also right in order to avoid that will uh, bending will be providing at the panel point so that that will be subjected to purely the compression force alone right compression force alone right now let me uh, see this schematic uh, um, schematically schematically right like this right uh, student right? just wait for a moment right? this is how, uh, at the top part member and these are called the webs right the webs and this is called the uh, web runner web runner and i have this apex point or peak point where this is called the ridge point and these are the nail plates and a top cord member uh, which is uh, called generally the rafter right prime compression member and the bottom bottom one is what called the bottom cord member or the tie member and this is a wall plate or the bearing over which this entire truss will be resting right resting right and this is the clear span from the end of the wall to the uh, in, inner face of the wall to the inner face of the wall whereas this is center to center is what called the uh, uh, effective span and now i am showing the nominal span also nominal span and sometimes uh, the um, uh, truss may be also be having some overhang portion right which is plumb cut now you can see it is also having overhang right and th this is what called the heel the heel right and this is the bc runner bc runner right and these are the purlins these red are the purlins over which the roof sheeting will be provided right and let us see uh, another schematic of the uh, same pitched roof right wherein uh, now uh, this is a ac ridge point wherein here i do have the purlins over which the ac sheets are sheeting is provided sheeting is provided and i do have this ma uh, major sling and this is the minor sling these are the Uh, struts and this is a tie right this this is a top cord member and this is a bottom cord member right generally the uh, top cord member and bottom cord member are generally provided by means of two angles back to back like this right two angles back to back provided on either side of on either side of a gusset plate like this right on either side of a gusset plate like this to right right and the bottom cord member whereas top cord member will be like this right top cord member right 
However, other members that all depends uh, upon the force, right? Either they will be provided two angles back to back or only a single angle, single angle to one side of a gusset pit as a profit. That will see during the designs, during the designs, right? Then, uh, here I am showing only the um, trusses made up of angular sections only, right? Uh, all these members are um, connected to the gusset plate, connected to the gusset plate at the joints actually right at the joint side here there is a joint which is presumed to be meeting at this point which is connected to the gazette plate by means of the bolt bolts right bolted connections or even to be connected by means of the welding also should as appropriate right and here uh, even we can see that the um, uh, purlins are also provided by means of the cleats so that they will be supported supported right uh, supporting these purlins right uh, this is a principal rafter and this is the um, bottom card member uh, principal tie right and now even we can see that this entire truss is resting over the angle cleat angle cleat and which is uh, uh, which is supported on the shoe shoe angle or angle cleat right which may be provided with uh, the anchor bolts anchor bolts right over a base plate on one side on the other side it may be provided by means of the a long slot hole over which the expansion or contraction is permitted like this right expansion or contraction is permitted right now and uh, this is the foundation bolt and uh, which is em embedded into a cc block which is embedded into a cc block right and th this is the principal rafter principal rafter and right? now once i see this uh, let me also see another schematic student right? uh, here roof uh, truss these are the different components the first one is the roof battens and this is the top part member this uh, this is a top part member and this uh, third component is the pitching point right this is a pitching point and th this is the bottom part member right and these are the webs we already seen uh, in the previous schematic and this this uh, sixth component is the fascia right fascia right and even just now we have seen in the initial discussion that uh, even we were providing uh, the um, bracings right this is a top part bracing right so that uh, when uh, wind is acting on the entire truss uh, the entire truss will be subjected to distortion like this right distortion in order to avoid the distortion and keep all the uh, member components in position we will be providing the top part bracing as well as the bottom part bracing as well as the side bracing that we have seen as well as the portal specification right now now i'll go to the portal specification also right that we will see those portal specifications right right then however let me see, see this once again this is the uh, ridge point right the topmost point is called the ridge point right and uh, these are the roof purlins right roof purlins right which are resting over the um, uh, main truss now right here i am showing on the main dress actually now i am showing this main dress made up of the rigid frame right rigid frame previously i have shown even that was made up of the truss right now this is the rigid frame student. please make a note right and this is a roof roof roofing uh, which is supported on these purlins these purlins right and and this is what called the eaves height right this is called the eaves point right eaves height and this is the side wall, side wall system which is uh, connected to this uh, um, um, member side, uh, member side when uh, e even, even. Uh, let me see this, right? Uh, uh, such members are what are the girds, right? These are the B members carrying the side sheeting. These are what are the girds student. Just now showing this that these are the girds, right? Side girds, right? Even at the end also we have girds, right? Therefore these are the side girds to which the um, uh, wall wall uh, cladding is done. Wall cladding is done, right? Wall system is connected, right? These are the girds, right? And wall girt, right? And even we will be pro uh, providing the bracings the bracing so that the distortion can be avoided just how i told it right? even in the uh, bay as well as the in the end or end panel also right or this is called the gable end right the gable end right where now we can see these are the uh, gable end right uh, gable which are provided by means of the uh, bracings bracings now even this is what called the uh, spacing between the two trusses is called the base spacing and 
generally these bracings may be provided by means of the rods may be provided by means of the rods like this right in the form of x shape right now however under uh, uh, when wind is blowing from one side this may be under tension uh, under the reversal of stresses cases that which was carrying tension will be under compression the other will be under now tension right that is how we will be providing the uh, bracing in the form of x or cross right cross right so the distortion under the wind can be avoided can be avoided right and these are the uh, called the rafters in a rigid frame right and this is eaves per lane eaves per lane right uh, which is there at the east level right right and this is the uh, end post spacing right where the shuttering can be provided right because uh, i may be providing a shutter where the vehicle can enter or even the metal can be taken outside or inside right there is a an opening may be provided by means of a shutter right shutters for closing this uh, workshop or this building right then and this is a portion the beam end frame end frame and this is a continuous beam end frame continuous end um, beam end frame and whereas this is the portion beam end frame please make a note of right and uh, once i examine this uh, and these are the anchor bolts uh, which are anchored at the um uh, base plate level that we already seen in the previous class how to how to design this base plate set right? you know i'm showing another schematic where uh, this is almost uh, a rigid frame rigid frame once again what i have shown in the previous uh, figure is almost a two right the roof cap and this is the uh, ridge vent and this is a roof sheeting uh, this is a gable trim right the skylight so that even i will show in the photographs right so, so as to permit the natural lighting into the workshop workshop building right or the uh, regular residential building as a preferred this is the eaves gutter eaves gutter and this is the uh, corner trim and this is wall panel and even window is there right window opening right this is a downspout right after collection of this entire water this uh, entire rain water can be taken by means of the downspout and this is a rigid frame column rigid frame column and this is the gable bracing just now we have seen right and this is the side wall girt side wall girt to which this wall wall cladding will be attached wall cladding will be attached and even if we are having door jams right uh, if i if at all i want to provide a door right this is a wall door and uh, like that even i may be having the lowers also so that uh, right uh, ventilation can be possible right and uh, this is the end wall girt end wall girt even here end wall girt and i do have the uh, door jam here right and uh, even overhead door may also be provided here right uh, generally i told that uh, it may be provided by some shutter right shuttering right so that we can open the shutter so as to enter into this workshop building right so the vehicle can also enter through this uh, wide opening wide opening right now so that vehicles can enter right and this is the eaves height eaves height and this is end wall rafter beam whereas these are uh, these are the purlins these are the purlins and you start it so oh, and we see that this is that building width from this end to the uh, this end right whereas this uh, first truss to the last truss is what called the building length right and this is the called the end bay end bay and these are called the intermediate bays right once uh, we see we see this uh, now let's move quickly to the top of uh, the discussion just now we have seen this base things right what the code says is that if i go to is 800 2007 student page number 3 and 4 uh, page number uh, 21 let me re revisit that now code says that uh, if one bay of longitudinal bracing is provided is provided like this right at the center of the building like this at the center of the building or at the building section the length of the building section may be restricted to 180 meters please see it is restricted to 180 meter in the case of the covered uh, buildings and 120 meters in the case of the open open gan open gantry building right open gantry side right? like, like this right therefore if only one bay of the bracing is provided then maximum width is maximum width is only 180 meter please make a note however if more than one bay of longitudinal bracing is provided near the center of the building uh, uh, or the section the maximum center line distance between the two lines of the bracing may be restricted to 50 meters for the covered buildings and uh, 
30 meters from the open gantries and the maximum distance between the set of the bracings at the near uh, to the nearest expansion joint or end of the building or the section will be restricted to uh, 90 meters and 60 meters in the case of the open gantry set. Right? The maximum length of the building section in such case may be restricted to 230 meters for the covered buildings and 150 meters for the open buildings like this. Right? Therefore, this is 90 plus 90, 180 plus 50. Therefore, the distance between these two, these two, two base of the bracings is 50 meter. Therefore, beyond which 90, 90 meter is Permitted, permitted. Beyond which compulsory you should have one expansion giant, right? Therefore, the maximum length now what is permitted is 230 meter with two bay bracings, whereas just with one single bay bracing, it is just 180 meter. Please make a note, right? Beyond which compulsory we need to provide expansion giant as per this IAC 800 2007 class, class 3.10.3, 3. 3.1.2, right? 3.1.2. From IH 800 2007, right? Once I examine this, uh, now let me go to the next reading. Next reading as the uh, uh, now let me see. Just now we already seen this, right? Next reading is what are the types of trusses, right? The types of the trusses. Now, generally, we, uh, in today's class, we shall be focusing on the pitched. Pitched roof trusses, pitched roof trusses, right? Where, which are called the sloped roof, right? However, these are the different types of the slope roofs, right? Where this is called the Pratt trice, Pratt truss, wherein at the center the uh, letter M, letter M, it if at all it resembles the arrangement uh, resembles in the form of letter M. This is called the Pratt uh, truss, whereas uh, if at the center it resembles the letter W, right? W, then this is called how truss, how truss, right? And whereas this is a geometry showing. The fink are French truss, fink are French truss, right? And this is the fan truss, the fan truss, right? And this is a fink and fan are compound, compound truss, right? When this is fink as well as the fan, right? The fan, right? Whereas this is a compound fan truss, compound fan truss, right? And this is a geometry which is showing the Belgian truss, the Belgian truss, right? And this is the north light glazing. Or sawtooth roof truss, sawtooth roof truss, so that it permits the lighting from the north direction into the workshop building or that of the building, right? Assembly building as appropriate, right? These are the different shapes, uh, the different types. Student, let me also revisit the other schematics at a quicker pace, right? Uh, let me see, right? This is just now showed, right? Now. This is just now we have seen this king post and this is Varen truss and actually this is a prod truss student. This is M means prod and this is Ho W right. Therefore this is a Ho truss W. It resembles W means right. Whereas this is resembling M is prod right. Whereas these are the pitched roofs and these are the uh, top chord member is horizontal. Whereas here the top chord member is the inclined or sloped right pitched right. These are what. Uh, top part members are horizontal. Please make it note. Both I am showing, right? Prot, right? Prot sloped as well as uh, the top part uh, horizontal right? fink, and this is called um, fink truss, uh, right? Whereas this is bowstring, bowstring, and uh, uh, the others uh, fink truss, right? Um, uh, hip roof trusses, right? Whereas these are the uh, Mansard roof trusses, right? Where now you can see that uh, there is a slope which is varying actually, right? And uh, even we do have the lattice girders, right? Wherein, uh, right, uh, both are inclined with a girder system, right? Whereas this is varan girder, and uh, even now we can see at the end uh, varanal girder, right? Where this is having uh, a larger depth, and this span, if at all the span is very large, then in which case a rigid jointed Varendel girder will be provided to resist that much of movement, heavy movements and heavy shear. Right? Once I examine this, let us see this is a truss chart student where this is a uh, this geometry is a fink finger truss, this is a double fink and this is a bow bow string and this is a queen post, right? This is a fan truss, this is a flat truss, just now we have examined it, the double hole truss and this is a gable end truss, right? The king post and this is a mono pitch uh, truss. The stubble truss and this is a sloping flat. This photograph I'll show, right? Flo uh, sloping flat, right? Wherein there's a hoe truss, 
for trust whereas this is hip trust right this is a studio trust this is attic trust right and this is pollination trust this is a double queen post trust this is a peaky back trust and this is a a frame or top cord supported trust and this is a inverted trust this is a scissor trust a dual pitch trust this is a valley trust right these are the different trusses the trust chart i have shown to you right now uh, let us see let us see a few um, photographs of these uh, different building students right? this is how now i'm showing a whole truss right w right it resembles w right in real practice which is supported on you know, this is a truss right which is resting on to a bearing plate which is connected by means of the anchor bolts here anchor bolts here, right now and uh, this is what called the bay bay distance right from truss to the next truss the bay right bay whereas this is called the end bay these are called the intermediate base intermediate base right and this is what called the span of the truss the span of the truss now let us examine all the schematics also right this is another schematic where uh, this is connected between the two columns tension even we can see the bracing student right tc right bracing is also provided right right this is a um, belgian type uh, uh, truss right belgian type uh, truss where this is once again a whole truss right w at the uh, center right and now you can see that people are uh, at work men at work right and uh, this is the end bay and this is the intermediate intermediate bay this is once again end bay this is the span span of the uh, truss right and even you can see that it is connected at the top by means of the purlins purlins right there is also purlins also connected at the top right and now other these are supported on the columns the other day we have seen the designs of these columns right the designs of these columns right now let us see uh, the other schematics student right uh, let me revisit to uh, this figure right this you already seen right this you already seen already right already over right is already over right yes this is already over right another schematic is this one right wherein this is a truss right a truss which is right Uh, just now we have examined another geometry wherein the other geometries are like this, right? Other, other geometries are like this, right? And right? now we can see that uh, here even we have the bracing, right? The bracings are clearly seen, right? We see the bracing, right? Bracing, right? And there's another uh, uh, truss, truss, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven span continuous, right? Length, right? This is the span span of the truss right and now another truss uh, where this is once again whole truck whole truss right whole truss right which is supported on to the uh, columns which are uh, provided by means of the the battened plates the other day we have seen that uh, these designs of the battened plates right two channels right facing each other connected by means of the battened plates please revisit our video uh, previous video on the design of the battened battened columns battened columns these are the designs of the battened columns right compound or built up columns with battening system battening system please make note of it right and uh, this is our another right uh, 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 geometry wherein this is once again uh, resembling a letter w there for whole truss right now now i am showing even that interior entire this one right along with uh, the side uh, Uh, uh wall panels side wall panels and now you can see that even this is built by means of the brick brick work and even window openings are also seen therefore much of the light is there even there is a door opening here right much of the lighting is there right this is a gable end right this is called the girt the girt right to which the roof uh, uh, side walls are connected uh, girt is nothing but a horizontal beam connected uh, between the columns For, to support this wall wall cladding right even the girt even for the side girt as well as the uh, gable end girt gable end girt right even now you can see that uh, these are connected at the bottom by means of the cords so that uh, uh, it will be avoided by means of the um, sorry they will avoid the buckling right even you can see they are connected by means of the rafters right in the uh, length direction in the in the bottom at the bottom right now uh once i see this one let us see once again another uh, schematic just now we already seen this uh, schematic student right let me go to another schematic wherein 
Now this just now we have seen, right? Uh, let me see this, right? Yes, uh, just now we have examined, right? This is how another schematic wherein, wherein this is that ridge point, ridge point, right? Now, uh, yes, right? Even now we can see that, right? Uh, the bracing is there, right? Even uh, there is a shuttle room, right? Shuttle provided here, right? So that uh, the vehicles can enter and even they can go outside, right? Even a lorry or trailer can enter into this workshop building, right? Workshop building, right? And there is all the roof shading is provided on the purlins, side, right? Which is supported onto, those purlins are supported onto the top part member of this truss, truss geometry, which is also provided by means of the bracings, side bracings, right? Now, let us examine other uh, other schematics, right? Uh, once I examine this, this audio over it, then another schematic wherein now we can see that even this is provided by means of the bracing side. Even uh, in the initial discussions, we already seen this, right? This is what called this is what called the uh, uh, this component unit, right? Uh, that knee brace, knee brace, right? Like this. Right? Now I'm just showing that knee brace in this uh, figure, right? Knee brace, right? Knee brace, right? Whereas uh, you please see that this is a, 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 a almost a, 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 Rigid, rigid frame uh, truss. It is not uh, a pitched roof truss. It is a rigid frame truss which is supporting the uh, roof system over these uh, um, uh, purlins over which the roof shielding is provided. Now even we can see that these are the uh, uh, permitting the skylight, skylight, right? Even there is advantage. There is advantage. We already seen in the uh, different components, right? Uh, skylight, right? So that uh, natural lighting can be uh, permitted into the into the building. Now, we, even at the other end, we can see that it is supported by means of the two shutters, which can which are now open, right? Even they can be closed even, right? Well, here you can see this is supported by means of two shutters, two shutters for entry into this. Uh, workshop building, right? Even these are provided by means of the bracing side, right? even the end bracing as well as the side bracing, side bracing, right? This is the ridge point, right? Once uh, examined, right? All these, uh, now let me go quickly to the top the code specifications, right? I hope you understood uh, what are the different uh, types of the roof rushes, and uh, just now we have examined this uh, uh, very elaborately. Now let me go to the next subheading as uh, the economical spacing of trusses. What do you mean by economical spacing, right? Economical spacing is defined as that spacing at which the cost uh, the cost of the truss is uh, now this is defined like this that right? cost of the truss is equal to two times the cost of the purlins plus uh, one times the cost of the cost of the roof sheeting roof sheeting right there is a definition of the economical spacing now let us uh, see how we will we'll derive that right. This derivation let S be the spacing of the trusses, just now we have seen, right? And let T be the cost of the truss per unit area, and let P be the cost of the purlins per unit area, and let R be the cost of the roof sheeting per unit area, and let X be the overall cost of the roof system, right? Which is equal to say some uh, say some con uh, per unit area, which is equal to X R some constant, right? Therefore, the cost of the truss decreases with the spacing right as the spacing decreases the cost of the truss also uh, uh, sorry the cost of the truss decreases with the spacing means sorry as the spacing increases the cost of the truss decreases right therefore vice versa right therefore t is inversely proportional to the spacing right t is directly proportional to 1 by s therefore t is equal to some constant c1 divided by s right and Whereas the cost of the purlin is directly proportional to the square of the spacing. Why? Because that uh, purlin is subjected to a bending moment, right? Uh, sorry, the purlin is uh, throwing a load, a load onto the truss. Therefore, because of which, even that may be subjected to a bending moment, right? Or even that purlin is also subjected to a bending moment. Therefore, as as the um, uh, spacing increases, right? The bending moments in those parallels will increase, increase as square of that, right? W L square by some constant, right? W square by some 8 or 10 or 12 as appropriate. Therefore, P depends on the bending moment. Therefore, bending moment is 
W square by some constant, therefore P is directly proportional to L square or S square. Therefore, let us say P is equal to some constant C2 multiplied by S square, right? S square, where L is nothing but the spacing now, right? And third one, the cost of the roof sheeting increases with the increase in the spacing, right? Therefore, as right, the spacing increases, the cost of the roof sheeting also increases, right? Therefore, now R is directly proportional to S, therefore R is equal to C3 multiplied by S student, right? Therefore, the total cost of the roof truss is equal to capital C is nothing but is nothing but the cost of the truss, right? Plus cost of the purlins, plus cost of the uh, sheeting, roof sheeting per unit area, all the three summation. But uh, however, we already know that uh, uh, this T is equal to C1 by S and P is equal to C2 S square and S is equal to C3 S. Therefore, substituting with now I'll get, uh, we can see that uh, this total cost is a function of the spacing alone, right? Either it is 1 divided by S or S square or S. Means from mathematics, we can say in order to minimize or maximize that cost, then I can say that DC divided by DS is equal to 0. Doing with now, I'll get, right? Uh, minus C1 divided by S square plus 2CS multiplied by uh, 2C2 multiplied by S plus C3 is equal to 0. However, however, now what I'll do is uh, if I multiply on either side by S, now I'll get to minus C1 by S plus 2C2 S square plus C3 S is equal to 0. But uh, we already see in that C1 by S is nothing but the cost of the truss. Therefore, it is minus cost of the truss plus even also we have seen that the cost of the Perlin is C2 S square. Therefore, now it works out plus two times that cost of the Perlin and, and also the uh, cost of the roof sheeting R is equal to C3 S. Therefore, this is R. Therefore, now it works out minus T plus 2P plus R is equal to 0. Or we can say that T, the cost of the truss is equal to 2 times the cost of the purlins plus 1 times the cost of the roof sheeting. Therefore, that spacing is what called the economical spacing. The economical spacing of the truss student. I hope you understood what you mean by economical spacing. That derivation we have said. Now, once you understood that, uh, now let us move quickly to the top. The next subheading as the uh, loads, right? Loads, right? However, you please see that uh, uh, now we'll, let us see that dead loads are self right? However, um, uh, we have elaborately discussed these in the video, our previous video, DSS 5, wherein that was IH 800, uh, IH 875, code of. Um, Codal provisions for dead load, live load, snow load, and special loads, right? And as well as load combinations, right? Therefore, you please revisit that uh, video DSS 5 student for, for, for the elaborate discussions. I'll skip up for one of time now, right? Therefore, now even now you can revisit IS 875 part 1, 1987, table 1, table 1, page number 16, and table 2, page number 30. Table 2, 30. Let me just go over to that. Um, uh, table, table, right? Therefore, that is how it gives the uh, weights. This IH instrument for part one gives that of the ro roofing, right? As best as cement sheeting. Now it says that 0.83 kilowatt hour, 85, 85 kg per meter square per plan area. It is equal to 85 kg per meter square. That is how these are furnished in IH 75 part one. Now you may uh, revisit that uh, previous video DSS five for further discussion, right? And furthermore, what is the self weight of this uh, trust now as a whole, right? Therefore, uh, there is a self weight of the roof sheeting student, right? Now, so self weight of the trust is given by uh, uh, sloped uh, roof trust is given by L by 3 plus 5 multiplied by 10 Newton per meter square, right? Using this empirical, empirical formula where L is the span of the trust, right? Span of the trust. And next load is that of the live load. Live load. Live load is also discussed there in that video DSS 5 student, right? You please go through that elaborately. However, now uh, this superimposed load, if I go to this IS 875 part 2, 1987, table 2, table 2. Let me just uh, revisit it a quicker pace. Uh, table 2, IS 875 part 2, right? Therefore, now I do have, right? Table to impose load on various types of the roofs. Roofs as per this IH 875 part 2 1987. Please make note right when the roof uh, type of roof and uniformly distributed uh, imposed load measured on the plan area and minimum minimum uh, 
imposed load measured on in the plan in the plan right therefore now our first one is flat flat or sloping or curved roof with slope up to and including that of the 10 degree only when access provided then 1.5 kilo per meter square right and if access is not provided except for maintenance only 0.75 kilo per meter square and what is the sloping roof where the slope is greater than 10 degrees 10 degrees this is called the slope slope with respect to the horizontal right if this is more than 10 degrees then then uh, now i would have for roof me me membrane sheet or purlins it is equal to 0.75 kilo per meter square minus 0.02 kilo per meter square for every degree increase in the slope over 10 degrees that we will see during the design problem how it is subjected to a minimum of 0.4 kilo per meter square and for all the curved curved roof uh, with slope line obtained by joining springing point to the crown with the horizontal greater than 10 degrees if it all is like this then a point it is given by 0.7 minus 0.5 to um, uh, ga uh, gamma square pivot from the square where gamma is h by i where h is the height of the uh, highest point of the structure measured from the springing level and i is the chord width of the roof if singly chord and shorter of the two sides if w chord right as appropriate and this value shall not be less than 0.4 kilo per meter square this is how as per ij 75 for for the various types of the roofs this i just record record right now this is just now uh, discuss a little bit about this right now let's skip off this one right next third type of load is the snow loads snow loads is also discussed in that video dss five is revisited right whereas if i go to this class 3 class 3 Uh, point one page number two. Let me revisit the quicker page side, right? Uh, right? And then I uh, I S, right? Sorry, right? And then I S section five part three, and then I S section five part three, which is applicable for the snow loads, snow loads, right? Nineteen eighty-seven, right? There it gives that the roofs should be designed for the actual load due to the snow load for the imposed load specified in part two, uh, imposed load whichever is more. Which one is more, or which one is severe, right? Which one is severe? This we already already discussed the other day. DSS five is revisited, and the minimum design snow load on a roof area is obtained by multiplying the snow load on the ground. It's not by a shear factor mu, which is given by S is equal to mu multiplied by S not, right? However, what are those shear coefficients are given in this? Class four, right? Class four. They are given elaborately where S is the design snow load in Pascal and plan area and use the shear coefficient as discussed in class uh, four and S not is the S not is the ground snow load snow load in Pascal's or Newton per meter square as appropriate. Right? These are the shear coefficients right are given like this. Right? Now if I see the shear coefficient, just example right for the selected uh, types of the roof side, right? uh, simple flat and mono pitch roof side right? are that of the a uh, positive uh, pitch roof set right? what is mu right these are already given for different types of the roofs and different types of the arrangement just revisit it student the other day we have discussed elaborate in dss5 video please revisit it i am not going for want of the time right now once i examine this now let us also visit the next type of load the next type of load however now the snow loads Now, what will be taking in absence of data is equal to 2.5 newton per meter square per mm depth of the snow depth of the depth of the snow as that of the live load itself if the live load is more than this one we will design for that one otherwise this itself will be acting as if the uh, live load however if it is greater than 50 degree then the snow load may be uh, snow load may be neglected because then the snow uh, will begin to roll down and fall at a Slope greater than 45 degree, 45 degree as the snowballs. It will roll, roll down as if that of the snowballs, right? Now, next step of the load is the wind loads, right? Now, however, uh, for elaborate discussion on these wind loads, you please revisit our video on this same playlist on the design uh, design of shear structures, DSS six wind loads on buildings, low rise and tall structures. As for IS 875 part in 2015 new code student please make a note right 2015 we have discussed elaborately uh, one dedicated video there right however now i will just go a quicker pace in today's class 
right now even as per the old code um, 1987 as well as well as that of the new code 2015 version both are show right that for now i do have as per this uh, um, uh, iis 5 part 3 2015 class 6.3 page number 5 right there i do have the basic wind speed basic wind speed let me just go back to that right uh, new code let me go to this iis 5 part um, 3 class 6.3 The design wind speed V Z is equal to V B K one K two K three K four where V Z is equal to design wind speed in height uh, at height Z uh, at height Z in terms of meter per second and K one is equal to probability factor R is equal to and K two is equal to ten roughness and height factor right as given in class six point three point one and K one is given in class six point three point one and K two is given in class six point three point two and K3 is a topography factor as per this class 6.3.3 and K4 is called importance factor for cyclonic region as per this class 6.3.4 right now whereas the risk coefficient K1 is given in table 1 let let me see this table 1 right this is of the table 1 should write right? where where uh, the risk coefficient for different class of the uh, structures of the building right however the entire india is divided into the different uh, wind wind speed zones let me go to this uh, page number 6 where uh, for a moment right? therefore now i am just uh, revisiting that entire india is right uh, yes this is how is divided into the contours the contours as per, as per this figure 1 right this is the map map of india showing the basic wind speed right map of india showing The basic wind speed, right? Therefore, now, now we can see, right? As per this color code, as per this color code, right? Now let us say is a Hyderabad, right? Therefore, there Hyderabad now is having 44, 44 meter per second, like this. Now we can see in the coastal zones, right? In the coastal zones, right? It is 50, right? Whereas elsewhere, even it is 55 also, right? That is how, as per the color code, it is now shown. Whereas Uh, most of the parts are there in white color they are indicating that uh, there the uh, speed wind speed basic wind speed is equal to 39 meter per second once uh, this is of the figure 1 basic wind speed based on the 50 written years written period right once i examine that right let me also see right uh, sorry let me come back to this right therefore for each of these for each of these uh, 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 locations would have the different wind speeds therefore accordingly uh, whether is it a general building then with a written period of 50 years then k1 is equal to 1 right like that if it are temporary shed with a um, written period of 5 years uh, then k1 factor for different 33 meters to 55 meters this questions are given and similarly for the buildings uh, um, presenting low degree of hazard to the life with written period of uh, Uh, 25 years coefficients are given here student you can just see this in this table one and for the important buildings such as the hospital buildings and communication buildings uh, etc are um, power plant buildings with written periods of the 100 years the coefficients are given in this table one table one right like that uh, even now we do have this uh, uh, second coefficient is the terrain height uh, factor k2 is equal to right here the entire terrain is divided into the category one which is called the exposed open terrain with a few or no obstructions right uh, no obstructions where uh, uh, even would have the category two where uh, this uh, where this represents uh, the air fields or open park lands are un undeveloped sparsely built outskirts and category three where the terrains With numerous closely spaced obstructions having size of the buildings in the range of um, sorry up to 10 meters up to 10 meters right whereas in the type two in the in the type two it is uh, uh, sorry that uh, category one it is up to two meters right uh, the category two two to ten, uh, 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 the category two it is uh, less than 10 meters however in the category three it is closely spaced up to 10 meters 10 meters set right? and and based upon these based upon these categories we do have we do have right like this side the top the category 4 is the terrain with numerous uh, large closely spaced obstructions set right? 
where the equivalent aerodynamic roughness height for this terrain is equal to 2 meters right 2 meters right whereas large city centers generally with obstructions above 25 meters uh, and well developed industrial complexes will fall under this category 4 category 4 should have please make a note right? therefore for which for which the uh, questions are given in this uh, table 2 right like this right for different height varying from 10 meters to 500 meters for different terrain category 1 2 3 4 Right, you can see from this table two. The third one, the third one is the topography K3 factor, right? Whereas here this uh, does not allow the local topographic features such as the hills, uh, sorry, uh, uh, valleys, cliffs, and uh, escarpment and ridges. Right? However, uh, this depends. This effect of the topography should be significant at the site where the upward wind slope theta is more than the three degrees. However. If this value is less than 3 degrees, then this K3 is equal to taken as 1, right? 1. However, this K3 is confined in the range of 1 to 1.36 for the slopes more than 3 degrees, 3 degrees, as given in this annex C. And last one is that of the importance factor for the cyclonic region, right? If it is cyclonic region, then this will come into picture. Otherwise, it will not come into picture, right? Now, okay, so, uh, uh, where the effect of the cyclonic storms is largely felt in the belt of approximately 60 meters width of the coast, right? Coast. Then, in such a case, that K4 shall be taken as 1.3 for structures of post cyclonic importance, uh, emergency services, or all industrial structures. In such case, K4 is equal to 1.15, and all other uh, normal buildings is equal to 1, 1, right? Now, once uh, we see the <clears throat> how this basic wind speed uh, is given, then next happening is uh, the design pressure P is equal to 0.6 Vz square. Now let us examine that one also, right? As per this new code, even let me go back to this um, as per uh, uh, old code also. I S E S thirty five part three nineteen eighty seven children. The same is the formula, right? Vz is equal to V B K one K two K three only. K four is not there here. Just just make a note. K four that uh, is not there, right? And this is all that same um, uh, photograph what we have seen even as per the code, right? Even the same. K1 factors, same K1 factors and K2. K2 factor is now as a function of the terrain category and the class of the building, right? Even there is a class of the building, right? Now, as per the old code, that class, the class was like this, the class A, right? Structure, um, structures whose, dim uh, whose dimension is less than 20 meters is called class A and class B is, right? Whose dimension is in between 20 to 50 meters. And class E is whose dimensions is greater than 50 meters. For which now we do have K2 factor. Whereas in new board, this class A, B, C, they are not there. Just only uh, category A, A2, oh, sorry, 1 to 4 are only there. Please make a note. For a height 10 meter to 500 meter, they are also, right? Now, like this, right? And this K3 was same as per the old code as well as, well as the new code. Only additionally, this cyclonic zone factor K4 is additional extra, right? That will come into picture as per the new code, new code, right? Once I examine this, even as per the old code, this is Vz is equal to 0.6 multiplied by Vz square, right? Where Vz is a uh, design wind speed in meter per second at a height of Z and Vz is equal to design wind pressure in meter per meter square at a height of Z, uh, Z meter, right? Now, once uh, I examine that, uh, now, let me see, let me see, even as per the new code, at a quicker pace student, right, uh, even, right, I am just revisiting to the new code, right, therefore, as per this, now I am having this uh, design wind pressure, Pz is equal to 0.6 multiplied to Vz square, where, wherein the design wind pressure, Pd is equal to, Pd is, uh, previously it was just, uh, Pd itself, as per the old code, PD itself was PZ is equal to 0.6 VZ square, but as per the new code 2015 version, now PD design wind pressure is nothing but that previous PZ 0.6 VZ square that multiplied by three coefficients one KD, KA, KC, where KD is called the wind directionality factor, KA is called the area average factor, and KC is called the combination factor. However, this uh, value of PD, however, shall not be uh, taken. Uh, as less than 0.7 Pz, right? You just multiply all the three factors, but in any case, Pd should not be less than the product of these three should not be less than 0.7. Please make a note. Please make a note, right? And this Kd should be taken as one when considering local pressure 
coefficients, right? The next wind directional factor KD, right? The randomness in the directionality of this wind for the buildings and solid science and open science, etc., right? Lattice frame uh, frameworks and trusses and uh, trusses towers. Uh, a factor of 0.9 may be used on the designs design wind pressures, whereas for circular or near circular uh, forms, this factor may be taken as one, right? Whereas for cyclonic affected regions, this KD may be taken as one, right? And the next one is area averaging factor K as a uh, this pressure coefficient given in table 7.3 or as a result of averaging the measured pressure values over the uh, given area. As the area becomes larger, the uh, correlation of the measured values decreases and vice versa. Therefore, now that is given in table 4. Therefore, the tributary area is uh, less than or equal to 10 meters per student, then this k is equal to 1. If this is uh, greater than 10 and uh, less than 25, then this uh, k a is equal to 0.9. If the tributary area is greater than 100 meters square, then it is equal to 0.8. What is the tributary area overall for the overall structure? It is uh, for evaluating the loads on the frames, the tributary area should be taken as the center to center distance between the frames multiplied by the individual panel dimensions in the other directions together with the overall pressure coefficient. Right? Whereas for the individual members, the beam for beam type elements, purlins, etc., the tributary area should be taken as the effective span multiplied by the spacing. By the spacing, right? And next, once I, I uh, do this. Uh, now let me go revisit uh, then what now i'll do is that i want once i get this uh, design wind pressure student then I'll, i want to know what is the wind pressure wind force is given by f is equal to cpe minus cpi multiplied by pd multiplied by ae as per this class 7.3.1 page number 10 just now uh, we were uh, discussing that now now i'll come to that right therefore there this is that right uh, wind load on the individual members right for the uh, this is given by f is equal to cpe minus cpi multiplied by a multiplied by pd student where cp is the external pressure coefficient and cpi is the internal pressure coefficient where a is the surface area of the structure element or cladding unit and pd is the design wind pressure design wind pressure right whereas this uh, internal pressure coefficient as per this class 7.3.2 uh, depends upon the degree of the permeability of the cladding to the flow of the air however uh, uh, this uh, uh, internal pressure coefficient may be positive or negative depending upon the direction of the flow of, of air in relation to the opening of the building. However, if the openings are not more than 5 percent, then this uh, internal pressure coefficient may be taken as right as plus 2 or minus 2 as appropriate, right? And and further, if buildings with the medium or large openings means if the uh, uh, now let's see the medium opening means if the opening size if the opening size is in between 5 to 20 percentage right like this right let me go to this opening student right uh, not this one right uh, yes not this one right uh, let me, yes this opening right now these are called the openings right for the windows and the, that of the uh, uh, doors right therefore if these all the openings right compared to the top this entire area is less than 5 percent is then this is right or if it is in 5 to 20 then this is called the medium opening right for this entire wall area compared to that this area of the opening is how much right right if it is more than 20 then this is a large opening right large opening according to that the questions are given now let me see this as per is uh, 875 part 3 right therefore this is a medium opening if at all it is between 5 to 20 percentage and this uh, uh, internal pressure coefficient cpi shall be taken in such cases as plus or minus 0.5 plus indicates positive pressure and minus indicates a section section means uplift it is a danger right section is a more dangerous student right whereas if the openings are larger than 20 percent then they are what called the larger openings in such case the internal pressure coefficient is either plus or minus 0 0.7 0 0.7 right now like that this is for the uh, sloped roof buildings like that uh, in in the uh, dss 6 video i have elaborately discussed right now let's see also that of the external wind pressure coefficient right uh, let me see this right external wind pressure coefficient right whereas uh, this is uh, given for the uh, clad buildings and mono uh, roof buildings etc etc but uh, in today's class right we are interested about only 
that of this not clad building right even table five clad buildings but we are interested about that of this pitched roof pitched roof rectangular clad buildings as per this table six right therefore now you find out h by w if it always less than half then keeping into the uh, angle of the slope angle of the slope varying from 0 5 10 20 uh, 30 45 right 60 right Whereas, uh, now let me see this schematic, right? If this is a theta is equal to zero, means wind is blowing from uh, left side, right? Uh, onto the building like this, right? Wind is blowing from this, right? Therefore, this, in such a case, this is called the windward side. Therefore, EF, right? EF, EF, right? Whereas, if at all, wind is blowing from the 90 degree, right? Then, in such a case, this is how the wind from 90 degree, right? Therefore, theta is equal to 90. Then, in such a case, this is EG. This is E, this is G. But all wind is blowing from theta is equal to zero, like this, right? Therefore, this is E F, right? E F, right? This is called windward side. Then this is called the leeward side, right? If theta is equal to 90 degree, then this is called the windward side. On the other side, leeward side is F H, F H. That is how the different zones are shown. Different zones are shown for getting the uh, uh, coefficients. External pressure coefficient. No, no, just you see accordingly, right? Keeping into the uh, uh, degree, degree of the slope, right? Keeping into h by uh, w, if it all is greater than uh, or equal to half and less than or equal to 3 by 2, if it all is greater than 3 by 2 and less than or equal to uh, uh, 5, right? Therefore, that is how accordingly the numeric values are given. One for theta is equal to nine, uh, 0 degree as well as 90 degree as well as the local pressure coefficients are also given, right? This is important for our discussions for the uh, sloped, sloped uh, pitched roofs or sloped roofs with rectangular clad buildings, right? Like that, uh, even the other day in DSS 6, I have elaborately discussed, right? All these kind of specifications should, right? Elaborately, right? One for canopy roofs, right? Um, uh, as per this uh, table 7 also, right? Uh, for the external pressure coefficients for uh, rectangular clad buildings, etc., etc. Right? This entire IS 75 is dedicated for the discussion only. For further discussion, you please revisit that DSS 6, DSS 6 video, DSS 6 video student. Right? Now I'll skip off that uh, because that is not uh, in our purview in today's class. Right? Now that is all the discussion student. I think uh, I hope you enjoyed the discussions. In the next class, we shall see the design, the design of a fink truss, the design, uh, sorry, the analysis of a fink truss, followed by the design also, followed by the design, right? We will meet in the next class with uh, further analysis and uh, design of this problem student, right? Till, uh, I hope you enjoyed the discussions. If you really enjoyed, then don't forget to click like, share, subscribe to our YouTube channel. We will meet in the next class with analysis and design of this roof truss problem, right? Till then, bye bye students.